In the wake of Wrestle Kingdom, the King of Sports ignites an annual trial of willpower known as the New Japan Cup. Every year holds new surprises, but one in particular has reshaped the entire New Japan Foundation that we know today. I'm Kevin Kelly, and this is The Recount. It's called Spring's Strongest Tournament, and for good reason. The New Japan Cup grants the wish of the ambitious and offers a championship shot to the one who survives the road through professional wrestling's toughest fighters. Similar to the G1 Climax, Faction Brotherhood is set aside in the name of personal growth. But there's a distinct difference from the fall gauntlet. The New Japan Cup is single elimination. One loss and you're out. The stakes have never been higher for the New Japan Cup. Since its formation in 2005, cup matches have flaunted some of the hottest clashes of wrestling styles in the world. What one year seemed to stick out as a turning point for New Japan's modern landscape. The year Kazuchika Okada became the second wrestler ever to convert the tournament's victory into an IWGP Heavyweight Championship, all on his first attempt. <laughs> March 23, 2013, Corican Hall is bracing for not one, but two exciting rounds of the New Japan Cup, as the final and semifinals are slated to be fought back to back. A fighter pool that once held 16 is now down to four. To modern fans, seeing the gold-studded star emerge in the semifinals is no shock, but this was Okada's first cup tournament, and the last few months looked bleak for the Rainmaker. Last year, the newly returned 24-year-old stunned the second longest reigning IWGP heavyweight champion, Hiroshi Tanahashi, stripping him of the highest title. His reign was short-lived, however, once Tanahashi became more familiar with the flashy fighter's explosive offense. Despite prevailing in the historic and notoriously grueling G1 Climax, the title challenger in Okada was overwhelmed in Tanahashi's domain, the Wrestle Kingdom main event. It seemed the Rainmaker was figured out, and a crushing loss to the ambushing Minoru Suzuki amplified the sentiment. In the chase for the ace, Okada was backsliding. His best chance to prove to his lingering doubters and himself that he wasn't merely a one-reign wonder rested in tonight's result. To make it this far, however, he had to endure a rematch of the G1 Climax Final and beat the feverishly ambitious machine gun Carl Anderson. Anderson was the most recent notch in Tanahashi's belt. One more gun stun might have been enough to rip the title from the ace last month at New Beginning, but he found himself looking down the barrel instead. He and his fans felt he was destined to plant his flag on New Japan's mountain at any month. But in front of him were now two walls. He either fell at the hands of the once-in-a-century talent or was stonewalled en route by the new young phenom like he was in round two. Many analysts would correctly predict a chaos showdown for the Cup's final night, as sharp edged Shinsuke Nakamura was breaking records at an unprecedented rate as IWGP Intercontinental Champion. But pouring onto the floor to face Okada came Toru Yano instead. Yano was piecing together a surprisingly dominant month by first playing spoiler to the monster Manabu Nakanishi early in round one and then shutting the door on a new beginning rematch between Okada and Minoru Suzuki by pinning the sadistic king of pro wrestling a week prior. <laughs> Suzuki-gun had been waging war against Chaos since Wrestle Kingdom 7 and threatened to effortlessly roll through the tournament. Suzuki even wreaked vengeance on his career-long rival and winner of the cup two years prior, Yuji Nagata. <laughs> only to fall victim to the belt thief the next week. After an initial phase of feeling out his opponent, Yano attempted to coax Okada out of the ring and have him play by his own underhanded rules. But once Gato put a stop to the antics, off came the gloves and the turnbuckle pads. Yano wasn't holding back on his faction mate, punishing his back with chairs and the exposed corner. 
In return, Okada paid him in kind with a special new submission hold that he debuted on Lance Archer in round one. Redding. He felt innovation was in store if he had any chance of surviving the tournament and reaching Tanahashi. And it all started with his toolkit. The cup was now down to two. Okada and the winner between two Herculean forces, Hiroki Goto and the fearsome new soldier in the Suzuki Goon Army, Davy Boy Smith Jr. The bout between the samurai and the power bomber came down to experience, in which Goto was bountiful. He was hot off the heels of a record-breaking third New Japan Cup tournament victory and showed no signs of easing up. After blasting a wayward Tama Tonga, who was trying to find a path on his own, he narrowly escaped round two against a longtime veteran who seemed trapped below his true potential, Tomohiro Ishii. The Stone Pitbull had five cups under his belt, yet made it past the first round only once. His shocking victory against two-time IWGP heavyweight champion Satoshi Kojima proved he was finally ready to participate in his first G1 climax five months later, cementing his status as a legitimate heavyweight threat. As for Kojima, his recent string of losses could partially be blamed on Goto's opponent. The IWGP heavyweight tag team belts that were recently wrapped around the waists of Tenkozy were now in the hands of killer elite squad, Lance Archer and Davey Boy Smith Jr. Smith was also responsible for giving his faction the rivalry edge over chaos in round one, with an enormous upset win over Shinsuke Nakamura. According to Smith, the king of strong style had awoken the beast of the invigorated Suzuki Goon army. Now, in front of an enlivened Korokin crowd, however, the strongman was overpowered, and for the moment, the beast was tamed. The 2013 Cup Final was now set. Hiroki Goto, the man who despite being 0-6 in IWGP Heavyweight Championship challenges, maintained a never-say-die mindset versus Kazuchika Okada. Last year, Goto bested Tanahashi to be crowned Cup Champion, only to fall in his challenge to the reigning Rainmaker. This year would be no different he would have to triumph over both men back to back to fulfill his lifelong dream. The two warriors took turns one-upping each other's destructive attacks until Okada realized how hard it was to keep Goto down. He attempted to get the win by submission, but couldn't fully secure red ink on the defending cup champion. His best moves were being read and countered by the tenacious veteran, much the same way Tanahashi had done. But the gap in experience level and in-ring adaptability, two traits that once separated the talented, often arrogant athlete from the ranks of the elite, looked to be shrinking. The Rainmaker penned his name into the history books by winning the IWGP Heavyweight Championship G1 Climax, and now the New Japan Cup all on his first attempt. Just as it all clicked for the Rainmaker, however, an inverse moment simultaneously brewed in the undercurrents of New Japan. A disgruntled voice echoed through the hall after a prior tag team match. I am Prince Kevin, and I am real. Recently beaten by Tanahashi in New Japan's anniversary tradition of heavyweight versus junior champion, Prince Devitt turned disdainful. I'm gonna be time splitters. I'm Apollo 55. We're gonna take the tag team championships. Then I'm gonna take you, Tanahashi. Oi, Tanahashi, dickhead. I'm gonna take your belt. The junior champ didn't feel he was given the respect he earned and declared his intention to smash through the glass ceiling of the heavyweight division. His newfound edge appealed to the sidelines of the Cup's fallen, Carl Anderson, Tama Tonga, and eventually Yujiro Takahashi, 
The Tokyo Pimp was ousted in round two, courtesy of Davy Boy Smith Jr., and had yet to find single success in the heavyweight arena. He was in danger of wilting at the bottom of the roster, especially in the loaded faction of chaos. Reaching the ears of those who failed at the chance to take the next step in the cup, Devitt's war cry that night in Cork and Hall invoked the rebellious formation of Bullet Club. As the cherry blossoms welcome spring to Japan, the 2013 New Japan Cup welcomed two of professional wrestling's most influential landmarks. Kazuchika Okada's ascension as an IWGP heavyweight legend and the union of struggling athletes to form an international phenomenon. Make sure you subscribe to us here on YouTube to keep up with all the action in ring and out. And to see all of these legendary matches in full length, head over to njpwworld.com.